Hi everyone, my name is Elliot Mitchell and I'll be presenting research from my dissertation at Columbia. I'm currently a data scientist at Geisinger uh, and this work is uh, titled Examining AI Methods for Micro-Coaching Dialogues. Jumping in. In the face of the growing burden of chronic diseases, health coaching interventions are a promising approach. Conversational interaction, for example through chatbots, is one particularly well-suited approach to designing health coaching interventions. There have been recent advances in conversational AI driven by advancing NLP methods and openly available corpora to produce uh, more dynamic and flexible chatbots. Until recently though, chatbots and health have been predominantly scripted or rule-based, which while potentially effective, can be limited and result in a repetitive user experience. There are open questions in pursuing more advanced approaches in health, as well as a lack of openly available corpora. Taking a look at common architectures for chatbots, many approaches separate components for natural language understanding, parsing and understanding the user's utterance, from dialogue management, which is determining how the system should respond to natural language generation, which is actually constructing that natural language response. Dialogue management is the focus of this work, particularly rule-based or data-driven approaches. For example, with data-driven, uh, with reinforcement learning, where responses are selected to optimize uh, the overall effectiveness or flow of the conversation over time, learning from examples. So with that background out of the way, I'll next talk about the focus area for this research, which is in health coaching. I'll then overview the four chatbots with different approaches to dialogue management being compared in the research, followed by the evaluation methods and results, and a brief discussion. So taking a look at how health coaching typically unfolds, there's an initial coaching session uh, followed by the client working on their own and then a potential follow-up session. Now in this interim time, the client may have questions about how to achieve their goals. And so in prior work, we argued that this uh, represents a potential opportunity for automated approaches to coaching through chatbots to offer in the moment feedback and advice potentially multiple times throughout the day. And we call this idea micro-coaching, and here's a bit of an overview of how it might look in the context of nutrition goals. Based on some initial description of a planned meal, the micro-coach would need to ask follow-up questions to determine whether or not the meal meets a goal, to then offer positive reinforcement or offer suggestions to further refine the plan. Uh, the focus of this work is on these initial components of understanding whether a meal is consistent with the goal, which itself presents considerable complexity. As a bit of a prelude, and this is all covered in more detail in the paper, uh, we engaged health coaches to learn what are the kinds of questions that might uh, be appropriate to ask in these kind of micro-coaching scenarios, which are shown here as a relatively limited set of question types. In addition, uh, we selected three nutritional goals to use as sort of working examples or case studies throughout this work. Now let's talk about the four uh, different chatbots. So first is the scripted approach, and this is the simplest thing you could possibly do. For each goal, always ask the same questions in the same order. The other systems incorporate some level of intelligence through natural language understanding with a system we designed called Food NLU. Returning to this overview of chatbot arch we designed Food NLU to process user utterances and generate a set of possible responses. More details on the system and evaluation are in the paper, but the key point is that it produces a computational representation of the meal and a discrete set of follow-up questions, so that dialogue management can then choose the next appropriate action. So looking at the first example here, rule-based, this uses if-then logic based on the presence of certain foods that are related to a goal based on the attributes identified by food NLU. The second approach uh, is data-driven. Uh, in this case through reinforcement learning and specifically cue learning to estimate the potential value of asking a question in a given state. And so to give some intuition for how this works, on the left uh, is a sort of a common game scenario where you might see reinforcement learning. You're trying to get to the star with the shortest path. In micro-coaching, uh, through dialogue, we're trying to get to, th to the answer about whether somebody meets their goal with the shortest dialogue possible. And so the state is... Uh, not where we are in the grid world, but it's sort of what do we know about the meal. And the actions are not moving through the grid world, but they're asking different kinds of follow-up questions that we learned from, from the health coaches. So this is sort of the intuition here. 
Uh, more details on the setup and evaluation of Q-Learning are also in the paper, but in general we created a corpus for learning uh, through crowdsourcing of 300 total dialogues, which we've also made openly available uh, open source on GitHub. We uh, did a validation experiment with simulated and also that crowdsourced data and found that reinforcement learning did result in shorter dialogues and also that it learns a logical next action when there's situations where you know, there's sort of a clear-cut thing that you'd think it should be doing. So that's reinforcement learning. The last chatbot here is a control condition where uh, it's just randomly choosing from the possible follow-up questions. So we would hope that this performs, performs worst. Uh, now jumping into the evaluation methods and results. Uh, we wanted to compare uh, these different approaches to dialogue management in the chatbots in terms of the length of conversations they produced, as well as their perceived quality in terms of the strategy employed by the coach, how natural the conversations felt, and how coherent the coach's responses were, as well as the perceived user experience. And so to do this, uh, we crowdsourced additional dialogues for unseen meals, and showed them to other crowd workers uh, to evaluate these dialogues in pairwise comparisons for each of those questions. Looking at the results, we found that uh, reinforcement learning did indeed result in uh, significantly shorter conversations than the other conditions, so that was its intention in that. Examining the quality of conversations, the results were somewhat mixed. Surprisingly, the scripted dialogues, which were sort of the simplest, least intelligent approach, perform pretty well on these quality ra ratings, including strategy. But there's an important caveat that because there was no intelligence involved, they didn't always collect uh, the necessary information to proceed with the following steps of microcoaching, so there's some trade-offs there. Uh, and performance varied by conditions where sometimes reinforcement learning did uh, seem to, to win out in these, in these pairwise comparisons. To dig into this a little bit more, we looked at the uh, overall length, and so we found that shorter dialogues did uh, end up being perceived as more natural, but counterintuitively longer dialogues were perceived as having a better question-asking strategy. Uh, there was no difference in perceived user experience between the groups. So what does this all mean? Uh, the reinforcement learning uh, dialogue management chatbot did succeed in leading to shorter uh, dialogues, so that is in one hand successful, but shorter did not necessarily equate with higher quality. Uh, it's possible that the uh, reinforcement learning question asking strategy in order was perceived as, as counterintuitive or illogical, uh, and there's also uh, some potential trade-off between how comprehensive dialogues felt. Um, for example, a longer dialogue might be perceived as more comprehensive, um, versus a shorter, more efficient one. It's also potential that these differences would play out differently with one-off versus extended use. Uh, we do contribute a corpus here for open use uh, from others, um, though there are some important limitations and caveats to this work as well. With that, I want to thank you all for listening, thank the collaborators and funding sources, and please reach out if you have any questions.